I mean, I was just doing what I do. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think anything of it. I knew, like, if I was going to go on this team that I was going to play, I was going to start. Like, mm. I was going to be, you know, the, the go-to. You know, that's just my mentality. And so, you know, people were like, oh, why would you transfer? You're, you're not going to play there, private school. You know, you came from public. I'm like, that's cool. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and y'all going to see. So that's what I did. I just went out and played and played hard. I was able to lead my team in a, maybe points, rebounds, maybe assist deals. I don't know. I was just – Shout out to our partner Obsidian by Magma Capital Funds. They're a hedge fund exclusively built for current and former professional athletes. Obsidian works hard to change the investing game for athletes. They strive to perform well in all environments, just like you. Head on the swivel, I'm focused and not out here nervous. Your words never hurt us. Straight out the dirt, no the grind is gonna take me to furthest. My verses and curses. Me and my dog wrote down 50-50, no curtains. I'm closing the curtains. Stop all the acting, I'm tired of all of the purpose. Moving like I'm losing. The WBA season is about to tip off, so it's only right that we have Connecticut's very own Kyla Charles and a DMV native, somebody who is very well known in this area when it comes to hooping, being an example, and just out here doing all the right things, was the number 23rd pick in the second round of the 2020 WNBA draft. She's just awesome. Had a good season, memorable moments in the bubble. So thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're always so awkward when the show first starts. To y'all, I'm not. This is not what's awkward to me. <laughs> Welcome. All right. All right, Kyla. So having you here is special because it's the 25th WNBA season coming up. A milestone. Mm-hmm. Uh, being a part of something so special. And then you were also, like I said before, a part of the bubble last season. I just need a little bit of a recap of your rookie year. Yeah, my rookie year was one for the books. Like you said, we were in the bubble. Um, It was a great experience, like, having everybody in one area. I was able to meet so many people, not just, like, in passing, like, sit there and have conversations. Um, I mean, there's only 144 of us in the league, and so we're very close-knit, very tight. So I had people from different teams coming up to me saying, like, are you good? Do you need advice? Like, how's your rookie year going? Even other coaches. So you just see how close-knit we are as a, a league. And it was, it was fun. I mean, it was really fun, like, being able to see, like, Diana Taurasi going down the elevator, you know, saying hi, seeing Sue Bird, Brittany Griner, all these people I grew up watching. Right. Um, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun, but um, after month two, you know, being stuck in the bubble, not being able to go anywhere, I was ready to go. <laughs> mm. But, I mean, us being there that long, you know, we were doing well. We were in the playoffs, went to the semifinals. So, overall, I had a good rookie year. Not the typical one, but right. one that I'll always remember. Right. When you say Diana Taurasi going down the elevator, the first thing I thought about was uh, her talking to the referee in the <laughs> lobby, like, yeah, what's up? So I, I think that's funny and that you you get to play against these legends such as Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi. I felt like that was probably a dream come true for you, but at the same time, that's your competition. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's funny because I think, like, the first day we were out of quarantine, I was running back into the hotel and I ran into her, Sue, and Brittany Griner, and I was kind of like starstruck. I mean, right. even though I met them already, I was at a USA training camp, and I met them. I was just like, oh, hi, I'm Kyla. And they were like, oh, we know who you are. I'm like, what's up? How are you? And I was like, oh, you remember me? So it was, like, really crazy that, like, my idols, like, actually knew who I was. But then it kind of just showed me, like, I'm supposed to be here. You know, people know me. Like, I de- deserve to be here. And so I'm just glad to be able to play with the greats and hopefully become one of the greats know later on in my career yeah I I definitely think that's gonna happen and and kind of going back to your high school career uh played three seasons at Eleanor Roosevelt and then you transferred to Riverdale I played at Riverdale for one season as well but I kind of want to know what made you after being like an all-met selection at Eleanor Roosevelt and um having you know these different accomplishments and stuff like that what made you want to go to Riverdale um just the competition we were winning games at the time by an average of 40. What? So, oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, like, what? we were beating teams in PG by an average of 40. Average. 
40. Some games would be 50, some games 60. <laughs> 40 was the average. That's like, ridiculous. Well, I would not play. I mean, yeah, that's states, like. We won states two years in a row by 30. Um, and I just want to be challenged. You know, Riverdale mm-hmm. has an independent uh, schedule, so we got to play whoever, whenever. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to prepare for Maryland. You want to be challenged? Huh? I know somebody that could challenge you. I'm telling you that right now. He's not you. you. He's a not beast. Not you. Stop while you're ahead. Right? <laughs> not you. First of all, what y'all not going to do is disrespect me and say I can't play. Because first of all, Slim, I'm going to tell you right now, I will beep, bust beep, y'all beep. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that way. I will give That's you the word crossover. Look, I asked you to play me, and you're That's scared. all he ever says when he talks about basketball is crossover. He don't know nothing else. <laughs> Bruh, what? <laughs> You know, I'm glad you remember <laughs> that, but I will bust you. I'm going to just say that from across the room. So, continue. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so I was just trying to, you know, prepare myself for Maryland and play competition, mm. not really. I could have stayed. I could have got another na- uh, state championship, but I was just looking towards my future, and I just want to mm. get better, so I left. It was a hard transition, but... It was fun. I made mm. some lifelong friends at Riverdale. We won a national championship there in Tennessee, and we went to Dix. Mm-hmm. And um, I was still able to get better and mm-hmm. you know put up my stats. Some people didn't think I was going to play and play well, but I was the best player on the team. Yeah, right? I was I was Baller. thinking that, like, you go from a school where – did you play with Shakira at that time, too? No, she's so, a year younger than Okay, me. so she she's year after. Okay, okay. So going to Riverdale, it's like – People automatically think, oh, she coming from a public school. She ain't about to do nothing. And then you go out there and you, like, you just bust an ass. I mean, I was just doing what I do. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think anything of it. I knew, like, if I was going to go on this team that I was going to play, I was going to start. Like, uh-huh. I was going to be, you know, the the go-to. You know, that's just my mentality. And so, you know, people were like, oh, why would you transfer? You're, you're not going to play their private school. You know, you came from public. And I'm like... That's cool. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, and y'all gonna see. So that's what I did. I just went out and played and played hard. I was able to lead my team in maybe points, rebounds, maybe assist deals. I don't know. I was just everything. a leader. Everything. <laughs> Baller. And Cross you know, the sheet. just get better for Maryland. That was my goal. I wasn't really paying attention to anybody oh, except uh-huh. you know doing what I need to do to get better. Mm-hmm. So how was how was it uh, being at Maryland, y'all? It was fun. I mean, at first, you know, if I'm be honest, I didn't want to go to Maryland. Like, I wanted to go to another school. Like, just get away from home. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, that. just explore a different, like, state or whatever. Mm. But through my recruiting process, like, Coach Freeze would call me every week, you know. And during her busy schedule, she, like, she will call me personally every week just to check on me. Right. And so, like, I felt very comfortable with her and the staff. Not because they were 15 minutes down the road, but because of, like, who they were. And so I ended up going, and it ended up being, like, the best thing I could have done because it was kind of like the best of both worlds. Like, I can go home whenever, see my family, get some food, get some money, whatever. Right. And then I can go (laughs) back to school and have my own, like, apartment, my own space, and, like, have my own world. So it was nice having my family at all the games. Um, You can ask my teammates. I used to ask for extra extra tickets every single game because I had, like, 20, 30 people coming. And – Having my nieces at the games, being around them, you know, seeing them grow up, but also, you know, being at school and having my own life. And it was fun. Um, kind of spoiled me because, like, going into the bubble and going overseas, it was kind of hard because it was my first time leaving home. But mm. being at Maryland was great. And then on top of that, we were one of the best in the country. Mm. Like, it wasn't just, like, me being at home. Like, I was getting better. I was at a great program that has a history of winning championships. And it got me better. It got me where I wanted to go. And I won championships. So yeah. it was a good move. And I was really glad that I was able to represent my home state. You know? What was, like, what was like the liveest game you played in? Like your most memorable game? I have a couple. Definitely the UConn game my freshman year. We were sold out. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's like Which almost. Was crazy. Who mm. was on that roster then? It was me. So starting five was me, Shatori, Brianna Jones. Destiny Slocum. Yep, Destiny was and a beast. When she left, I was like, what is going on? But that, that's, a, that's another <laughs> story. I know we ain't going to get into that one, but yeah. Um, and I think that was it. Me, Chitori, Bree, Destiny, and I think Kristen was a constant. I don't know if you guys know her, but she was like a shooter for us. Um, and it was sold out. Like Who was for who played for UConn at that time? Oh, UConn it was um, Gabby Williams, uh, Nafisa Collier, their point guard, um, Chong? Chong? Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Um, yeah. Who else? Chong. 
I can't remember. Honestly, yeah, yeah, you said enough right there. <laughs> That's I know they're nice. <laughs> yeah, goddamn. Yeah, they, they were good. They were good. I, mean, I think we only lost for like four, five or three. It was a really good right, game. So. Like, right. yeah, that's it was, all right. it was a wide out, about so 20. everybody in the stands had all white. Like I said, it was sold out, so it was almost like 19,000 people. Dang. I mean, it was crazy, like loud. Um, I actually played really well. I think I had like 18 um, as a freshman. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, y'all don't know. Y'all are talking to I mean, a I, real life. I mean, I know. Bro, I can try to take the ball in, downstairs and it happened. She's in Maryland's history. Bro, yeah. we, she's we, in the history. Like, you know, yeah, I, 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 nah. I'm, you know, Say it. We could take her, bro. We could take her, bro. Don't put me in it, though. Like, <laughs> Bro, we could take I'm not, her. No, bro, because if I get on the court and I get cooked, like, I'm going to be Bro, we not getting cooked. I'm telling you, I'm not getting cooked. I don't know about you. I'm yeah. not getting cooked. And that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb, so I don't even care about what you're talking about. Not you All taking right. Instagram good. Quotes. It sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I sounds want, good. I want to fast forward to the bubble, though. Yeah. Like, fa- yeah. yeah. Talk to you me. You going to skip her a whole minute. We'll come back to your Maryland career. Yeah, what well, yeah. She was balling. We know she was balling. She had 18 the first. I wasn't even there. There's oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Bro, don't try to gang up on my man like that, bro. I thought she said you come. She said Oh, yeah. More than I got it. Oh, my God. We lost. But then my junior year. I think we were down. We played Minnesota at home. We were down 16 and a half. Mm. And, you know, I told my teammates in the huddle at halftime, I was like, we're not losing this game. Mm. I don't know. Nah, what did you know? Nah, how did you really say it, though? Yeah, like, nah, real. Get a like, real. I know you was like, how you like, nah, say get it, a real. Cause, cause, hey, yeah, come hey, on. Let's go. Like, how you say it? Bring it in. And, like, they came in. I was like, we're not fucking losing this Ooh. game. Ooh. <laughs> nah, you nah. You beat that right now, though. <laughs> beat. I need you to get in. Care. Come on. Yeah, nah, Ooh, come on. You say? Nah, you know her vo- her voice got a little deeper the second yeah. time you said Yeah, let, 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 you see wait, her wait, you see her eyeballs. Yeah, I was like, we're not we're, I was like, look, we need to lock in because we're not losing this game. Mm-hmm. Um, we needed this game to steal the regular season championship. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't care if we're down sixteen or thirty. Like, mm. leave it all on the court and we're gonna come out with it up. Oh, yeah. And I think with like a minute left, we were still down seven. But I I didn't think we were gonna lose. Like one minute left now yeah. seven. I didn't think we were gonna lose. Like yeah. in the bottom of my heart, I knew we were gonna win. I don't know how, I don't know when, but yeah. you know we were gonna happen. I think right. I had got. I think I hit two a, t- a two pointer like a layup. My teammate had an and one. Mm. So we're down two. That's fine, right there. And there was right. ten seconds left, and I don't know. We got the ball, and like they didn't know what to do, so I went up to my point guard and I was like, "Give it to me, give it to me." And <laughs> then layup, <laughs> and then we tied it, and we were um it was a tied game. And they had the ball four seconds left. And Shakira, you know, her mm-hmm. long arms was guarding the ball. She tipped it. She tipped it to me. And I was able to make the layup um, at the buzzer. Buzz- and we that's won. OC. Ooh. <laughs> that's OC. That's OC. <laughs> Y'all scored nine <laughs> points in one minute. That was crazy. <laughs> went on a 9 0 run in 59 seconds or 55. They were like sick. Yeah, no, I know. Sure I know that. Putting their hands in their head, crying. But I didn't know why, like. They were gonna win. Like, I mean, they were all 16, <laughs> but it's Maryland, and y'all are talking. Y'all was, y'all was in your knee, right? Yeah, talk exactly. your stuff, cuz. Oh, no, keep going. No, I wanna hear the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> good she talking her, she talking year, her shit. Yeah, talk your shit. Yeah, so that year we talk your the regular season championship, and I'm winning my belt. And yeah, I got a ring for that, so. Oh, I, that's what I wanted to talk about, cuz Maryland has this stereotype of. Oh, they do so well in the regular season because they don't play against anybody in the Big Ten. And then when you get to the NCAA tournament, Mm -hmm. it's not that you don't do well. You just don't necessarily finish on top. Exactly. How do you feel about that stereotype about Maryland women's basketball? Or, like, when – I'm pretty sure you've heard people say that before. Yeah. I mean, one, I will say the Big Ten has gotten better every single year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These last two years, I think we had, like, seven to eight teams, like, ranked top 25. Yeah. And so you can see it's getting more competitive. More people are coming, like, to the Big Ten and just making it a competitive league. But, I mean, I can't – I mean, I can't lie. I mean, we haven't been that far in these last couple of years. And so, I mean, we can perform all we want in conference, but if we're not getting to, like – I think this year we went the farthest we had in a while. Sweet 16. Sweet 16. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We went to the Sweet 16 my freshman year. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they're right. We got to get over that hump. And we have the players, we have, you know, the keys. Our coach is a legendary coach. We yeah. just have to perform. Um, right. I, you know, I was sad watching the game this year because I really felt like that team, I felt really, I felt like we could have won it all last year, but mm-hmm. we didn't have a tournament. Mm-hmm. And maybe we would have, maybe we wouldn't have, we wouldn't, we don't know because of COVID. But, you know, this year I really felt like they could have won it all, but like you said, they didn't perform in the, twenty, uh, the Sweet 16. So, I know my team is good. I I know we're gonna get back on top, mm-hmm. some way or another. Um, but they're right. We gotta get over that hump. Yeah, facts. You 
you know, we got to show that we, we belong up there. Like, right. we're ranked high, but we got to, you know, have that proof. Right. right. So with all the success that you had in college, what's one of the biggest lessons that you learned, like, when you left? Um, Like, outside of the court? Yeah, just outside the court, on the court, everything. Well, well just something my coach always say, um, she would always tell us is, like, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think I took that on every aspect of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, just always trying to challenge myself mm-hmm. um, in every area, whether it was basketball, whether it was school or career-wise, um, mentally. Um, so that's one thing I learned, just always challenging yourself and not getting complacent, you know, not settling. Because mm-hmm. when you get too comfortable, then someone's passing you. So always setting little goals for myself on and off the court to achieve um, just to get better every single day, right. doing something every single day to get better. So, how do you all feel about the uh, the whole situation with March Madness and the women not being appreciated as they should have been? Um, with the weights, yeah, and everything. With the weights, with the food, <laughs> with everything. everything. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. With the weights, with the food, <laughs> honest, with the, the like, gear, that's terrible. To be honest, I wasn't. I was upset, but I wasn't shocked or surprised. Right? Because like, have you been through that already? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. being a Women's a- athlete, mm-hmm. like, we get the short end of the snake all the time. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's sad because we get used to it. Um, but it's crazy because we thought, you know, things were evolving, things were getting better. And, you know, we come out with this weight room with, like, three weights. <laughs> it looked like it was, like, yoga what, class. What, like, like, what in the world? The thing, the thing I didn't like about right. it, and it's like, I'm an individual who's striving to be, you know, on TV and all that stuff full time. And um, Holly Rowe goes, this was meant to uh, just be a exercise area for them to roll out really fast before they meet <laughs> with the team. This was never meant to be the weight room. Yeah. And then they show, like, this whole section where they weren't really going to put a full weight room in until the Sweet 16. My thing is, why do the men get it for the first round of 64, the play-in games, and the women have to wait until the Sweet 16 anyway, if, right. if that was the case. Right. But what is the purpose of that? They don't need a lift. They don't need to get loose and be ready for the games. Right. Or, you know, so uh, I felt like they could have left that interview alone. It was no justifying yeah, exactly. that fact. Yeah. Yeah. It had no excuse. Yeah. Um, they, were, they said it, it was a space issue, but the room that it was in was huge. It, it was a conference center or something, like convention center. Yeah, yeah. it, it um, was just fine. And it's just crazy because we do everything the men do. We lift three times a week. Practice every single day, like we put in the work, just like they do. So I don't know why they would think that was okay. Right, like, that don't make any sense to me personally. Um, and there's just no excuse. And it's just sad that on the biggest stage where all eyes are on the NCAA and what they're doing, the tournament, they failed. They failed right. Us. I think the the craziest thing is, and I don't know how often y'all watch women's basketball, but when you watch it, and this is like being non biased at all, you're gonna see some of the most skilled basketball you'll ever watch. 100%. From a standpoint of, like, I mean, yeah, some players are actually dunking now and, like, not just, like, tipping it, like, throwing it down. Mm-hmm. For real. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You don't watch basketball, then. <laughs> I'm a football player. First of all, don't gang up on me and a bunch of basketball <laughs> players. I'm literally a football like, player. Hella girls just For real? with ease. Yeah. In That's college, in cool. college, college games. Like, women, like, I seen a, I mean, uh, right, Brittany, I Brittany, 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 they have the fundamentals yeah, now, and it's so fun to watch yeah. Yeah. from that aspect. Because it's like they play the game the right way. Sometimes with the men, and I feel like, one, and I'm talking from the NBA standpoint, their season is so long that they can take games for granted. Facts. When you watch the WNBA, it's none of that. Because, first of all, the season is short, and um, it's only 12 teams. Yeah, every game counts. Mm. Yeah, and the playoff format is tr- – I mean, yeah, it's trash. It's trash. I'm going to say it, it's, yeah, it's trash. trash. No, it's like, straight up. I'm like, in the WNBA, how do you have to win, what, one game before you get into the semifinals is when the series starts, Mm -hmm. and it's best of five, not seven games. That's not fair. (laughs) That's a five. So you play all all season for your season. It could be gone in in a matter of one game. That's wild. Yeah, so I just feel like the – 
It's just sad because it's like the, it's some of the best basketball I've ever watched. Like I said, like non-biasedly, like I could watch an NBA game and be vividly bored. Mm-hmm. And, and I say that because a lot of them night in and night out, they don't give it their all, but they don't have to. They have 82 games to prove themselves. While mm-hmm. on the flip side, the women, what, it's like 30, 40 something, mm-hmm. half of right. that. If if that this year, that is last year was 22 games. Yeah. So, so would y'all say college sports is more entertaining than professional, like being in a professional 100%. league? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I would watch more college basketball than the NBA, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's just because everybody got one common goal, like they're trying to make it, and they everybody hungry. Once you make it, it's just like, all right, you're just trying to survive, and you're trying to get the check, mm-hmm. which is not that entertaining. Mm-hmm. So what was it like going from all these hack stands at Maryland, sold out games, and then, of course, like we say, you didn't have like a real season, so to speak, with fans and stuff, but then you go into this bubble with – essentially nobody like you got to feed off your own energy and your team's energy um it actually wasn't that bad because like when i start playing i don't really hear the crowd like yeah sometimes you like feed off of them but i'm really locked into the game so i'm not really paying attention to that but it was kind of like pickup they would play music you know during the game so that kind of like gave us some energy and i mean it was a little quiet but i made sure i brought the energy every game for my teammates right mm-hmm. just trying to be Lit, excited on the bench. On the Y'all court. had the best <laughs> bench in the WNBA. <laughs> all right, we call it um, the best one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tisha, they would go crazy. <laughs> so, like, just having that energy, like, to give to our, you know, our teammates on the court, especially missing the fan energy. Because I think, not I think, Malik and Sun has the best fan support. Like, mm-hmm. it's oh, always sold out. That place is lit. Yeah, so that's what I'm excited about. That place that. is lit. But um, it wasn't terrible. Like, once you got used to it, you played a couple games. It was just like playing pickup. Uh, the music helped though. The music definitely helped. Then y'all had like the little fake fan, uh, fake fans. Yeah, the they try to put like fake cheering <laughs> or whatever. But did, did, did they put your face up there? Huh? Did they put your face up there in the fake stands? No, no it's like why would they put? It's like, put, it's like it's bro, I thought I saw like some in the stands. They had like no, the little like fake random. little the pictures. I didn't have that. No, we no. didn't have like seats. Like it was just like it, it was like a. a they were at IMG. Yeah, oh. and then they put like two oh, courts okay. next to each other, oh. and like had a curtain in between, and then oh. it was like. We're doing the score table and then the benches on the other side. Oh, and they man. had like little chairs for like family who was there, but like they didn't have like stands to put like fake people or mm-hmm. whatever. Oh, what was the day to day like in there? Um, I mean, we were going every day. Like either you had a game or practice or film. Like every other day you had a game. We were playing every other day for two months. I think we had two complete off days where we didn't have to do anything. Like we didn't have film, we didn't have to see our coaches, mm-hmm. but two off days in three months. Um so mm. it was it was it was fast. Like especially for me, it was my first year. I was trying to learn the league one, learn my team, learn my system. But then also like having to learn a different team every other day, right. learning different scouts. And like sometimes they'd be like, "Oh, this person, you know, you should know that she does this and that." And then and I'm like, "Oh, I didn't know." And they're like, "Oh, I forgot. I forgot you're a rookie. Like you don't know people's tendencies yet because it's your first year." Mm-hmm. And so that like they were trying to like feed me up. So I did a lot of film. Like, literally every single day I did some film either to prepare for a game or to watch a game and get better from a game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was kind of draining because literally every day, like, you're going. But it was fun at the same time because, you know, right. I'm getting to do what I love in the middle of a pandemic mm-hmm. safely right. um, on one of the biggest sta- uh, yeah. biggest stages in the America. So it was fun, but at the same time, it was, it was a lot. But I think mm-hmm. it really prepared me, and I felt like I learned a lot in a short time and that I'm ready for this. That's what's up. You really prepared yourself being a student at a game. That's one of the laws. That's what's up. That's law. That's what's up. That's how you really separate yourself, like learning the game, studying the game, watching film. Because, like, in the league, everybody's just as fast, just Mm -hmm. as strong, just as skilled. What really separates you is your IQ and your mentality. Facts. So that's, like, the next step. Like, you can be very skillful, but if you don't have the mentality, if you don't have the discipline, if you don't watch your games and try to learn from it, you're not going to, like, you're not going to progress. What player did you go up against? And you was like, damn, she's strong. <laughs> I ain't fucking with her. I ain't going over there I no mean, more. <laughs> to be honest, like, I thought, like, in, in Maryland, like, I played the four. Yeah. I mean, because we didn't have that much size. But, I mean, I, I, I felt so little, you know, compared to those girls. Like, I was playing the two in the league. Mm-hmm. And not the three, not the four, like, the two. Like, a full two most of the time. But, um, Sylvia Fowles. 
Oh yeah, big sale. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I remember my first, <laughs> the first game. Like I had a wide open lane. I'm thinking like, oh, I'm about to lay it. I'm about to get my first two points. And she came out of nowhere and blocked the mess out. Give me that. Yes. <laughs> 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 like, out of nowhere. Welcome to the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, For real though, no. I really feel like she like blocked it and bounced it off the backboard. Like she was a big woman. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she said, just home. like I said earlier, welcome. <laughs> welcome. No, that's, that's BG. So BG is like, I like saw her. I was like, hi. Like she's tall, <laughs> big. Like. So that crazy. was that was your that was your welcome to the league moment right there. Yes, first game. I'm thinking like I don't see anybody. Like she came out of nowhere and blocked my shot on the backboard. And I was just like, dang. <laughs> like dang, it's not easy out here. So that was my welcome to the league moment. First game. Goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, so um. So you was talking about like, you know, you was in the bubble for like two to three months. Mm-hmm. Every day is the same stuff over and over again. I just wanted to know like, how did that play a toll on your mental health? Um, I mean, it was pretty distracting. But at the same time, like you said, it got monotonous. You know, it was the same thing. Sometimes we didn't even know what day it was. It was just time for practice, time mm. for a game. Like, I didn't know what, if it was a weekend or a weekday, especially mm. with the pandemic and, you know. Um, but at the same time, I did have some time to kind of just breathe and have a lot of time for myself, especially because I had my own room. And so um, I'm big on like reading books, meditating, praying, reading my Bible. And I think that helped me, especially when I went overseas, like being overseas, the time difference, um, a whole different culture. And in the middle of the pandemic, we were kind of stuck in the house. Um, I just... Right, I just read, I, I read a lot of books to help my mental. Mm-hmm. A serial winner, what to say when you talk to yourself, my Bible, that's the biggest thing I always read. Um, and just taking it day by day, um, especially with the with corona and the pandemic, a lot of things, you know, uh, came to light for me. And I had to, like, really figure out, you know, my path. And so just taking time for myself is one of the most important things I could do. And just taking it day by day, you know, it's a journey. Life is a journey. You're going to go through ups and downs. As you see, we were in 2020 thinking that there was no future, and now look at us. Um, And so it's just about just taking it day by day. And in the bubble, that was one a big thing. Like, I miss my family. You know, I miss being able to take my car and drive down the street to get food. I felt like I was locked up sometimes. (laughs) My teammates made it good, uh, made it fun. The league had a lot of resources in terms of, like, people we could talk to, in terms of mental health. Um... You know, I had a lot of teammates, like I said, players coming up to me asking if I was okay. So, uh, overall, it was a good experience in terms of, like, keeping my head, and I had a lot of resources. So. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, can, getting back on the, the subject of the 25th season, I think that is, like, the most exciting and popping thing going on right now. And with that, three new jerseys. Got some merchandise, including some jumpsuits, vests with the WNBA. Like, it's like some actual real swag. Like, mm-hmm. something like, oh, I want to cop that. Mm-hmm. The jerseys, like the designs, we're going to have to throw a picture on this joint so uh, the audience can see them. They, they definitely go crazy. Do you feel like it's a different type of excitement around this season? Because, one, it is the 25th, and then, uh, you know, limited fans will be allowed. You'll be able to travel mm-hmm. and differently and have, like, a, a real experience in the WNBA. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited. I think mm-hmm. everybody is. Like you said, it's the 25th season, the new jerseys, being back in the arenas and being able to have our some of our, you know, fans there. Um, it's just bringing the hype back. Um, I think everybody's excited to play. Um, counting down, I think we have, like, a month. Mm. Yeah, May, May 14th. Yeah, we start oh. training camp in a week. And so I'm just excited, especially to have that real experience of traveling, going to different arenas, seeing the different arenas. Um, I'm excited. Like, it's going to be really fun. So so out of the three jerseys that y'all got, which one is your favorite? The blue. The blue yeah. one. I love all of them, especially how they, like, incorporated, you know, um, the Native American yeah. side of our, like, organization, the tribal stuff. Um, but the blue one just goes crazy. I just love the color. It's different. It's really different. And then the the writing on the front. Mm-hmm. It's just really nice. So I'm excited to see that with the three. That's my number. Yeah. Charles in the back and wearing it. And, um, yeah. 
They all go crazy, really. I love all the uh, uniforms, especially the Rebel Edition, mm. the New York one. With the the New York is like yeah. that. Yeah. My, right. my favorite is Chicago's oh, with yeah. the uh, the black with the it's yellow. Like a, um, it kind of gives you like an old school feel. Yeah, uh, I think those aren't the her jerseys. The her, um, no, I didn't mean her as a whole. They all mean her. Mm-hmm. They're not the heroin jerseys. Mm. Those yeah. are the all white. But um, I forgot which ones those are. Which edition those are. Might be Rebel, but regardless, I really like those ones. Um, so that made me going to get a jersey. Right, y'all. Okay, if you give me a jersey, I'm <laughs> rocking that everywhere. I you was, heard I that, was right? going to cop one blue. anyway. I want all of them. I mean, hey. That's how I'm going. You got you to gotta rock the, the WNBA yeah. swag. I'm going to go. go. White, orange, and then the blue. I like the blue just because she said it was her favorite. Uh-huh. Nice. Just, just, cool. just be grateful for whatever you get. So, so, <laughs> any, so anyway, from a, from a marketing standpoint, we see the game of women's basketball continue to grow. I don't know if you're on like WNBA Twitter and see like the exciting tweets and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But from a standpoint, since you play in the league, what do you feel like has to be done to continue to grow the game? I'm um, just putting us out there, you know, extending the media coverage. Um, I'm, so glad that Sue, you know, Sue Bird came out with together and was able to yeah. have another media outlet for just women athletes, women sports, and that's what we just got to continue to do. Get it out there because a lot of people don't know because they don't see it. Exactly, they right. don't see it. Right. You know, you'll have. Uh, I think at one point the NCAA tournament was just on ESPN two, right. mm-hmm. and you have sixty four teams playing, so many games going on, and only on one channel, trying to go back and forth between games. Um, it's just, ex- you know, extending the media coverage. And now we have social media, right. which has helped so much, boosting our coverage. Um, now ESPN, we're getting more screen time, especially with, you know, the pandemic, the season last year, no fans. They had to put us on TV. Right. And they just saw how much. And that was great. The exactly, ratings, yeah, the ratings went, went up. Right. They saw how many people we brought in, how much, like like you said, the ratings went up, and how much people like would like to see us play. And it's just they don't get to see us. And so mm-hmm. being able to have that coverage, um, have that exposure is what we really need. Mm-hmm. I, I see Kyrie support y'all a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, how how does the NBA help y'all? Like, how does those those players help y'all? And I mean, they're, yeah, an extended question, like having male allies. Yeah, yeah right. no, they're our partners. Um, they're always vouching for us. Um, we would have meetings, you know, throughout the league, and you would see like Kyrie, uh, Chris Paul on it. You know, they're trying to one educate themselves, but then also you know show that they're there for us and they're allies. And so we need their voice because, you know, sometimes they don't listen to us. They don't listen to women. You know, mm-hmm. so having those male allies, having people from the NBA respecting, you know, what we do and saying that, okay, they need to have just as, uh, just as much as exposure as us yeah. or, you know, they do as much as we do. Why, right. why aren't they getting recognized for it? Um, that's just an extra voice that we need. We need everybody's voice if we want it to um, improve and get better. And so yeah. we really do appreciate them, you know, stepping in, helping us, especially Kyrie, especially with – a lot of people opting out of the season and he, you know, putting some of his money to support them. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. And so we appreciate that um, and their voice and we just hope that we continue to move forward and grow from that. That's right. And then uh, the, the last thing before we wrap it up, we know you got to get up out of here. Mm-hmm. I don't think it would be right if we had you here and then talk about the social justice movement and how the WNBA played such a pivotal part in it even from the bubble. A new documentary is coming out called mm-hmm. 144 because of all the things that you guys did. Breonna Taylor on the back of the jerseys last year. That's, you know, that's huge. And then, man, from a standpoint of when you guys was on the court all together, locking arms and showing unity and using your voices, what type of impact did that have on you as an individual? And then how close did that bring you guys together as a whole in that bubble having to stand together during a time when things weren't good on the outside world? Yeah, one, just seeing, you know, all these women, like these amazing women using their voice, you know, being fearless, being confident, gave me more confidence. One, to use my platform and use my voice, and it inspired me, one. And two, like you said, we're such a close league. Like, Mm -hmm. everything we did was based on our decision. Like, we would have meetings, all 44 of us or 144 of us in the room, and be like, okay, what do we want to do as a collective? Like, what do we want to do as a league? And I remember... um, when we sat out for the games, uh-huh. um, the first, like, Washington and that first group of teams, they sat out. And that night, we all linked into uh, in the hotel, in the conference room, and they were like, okay, what do you guys want to do? 
as a league? Like, do you guys want to sit out for the rest of the season? Do you want to sit out for a game as a protest? Like, how do we want to approach this? So the fact that they always included us in, like, big decisions, not just, like, a, you know, representatives, the whole league as a collective, was just great. And you just see that we really want to do this together. You know, that's what we show. We show, we show unity. We show solidarity and that we're in this together. Because, I mean, we're, I think, more than 70% or 80% uh, black in yeah. our league. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we got to show up for our community. We got to use our voice, our platform. We have so many people, watch, po so many people watching us. Um, we had, like you said, the ratings going up. So we wanted to use that for our advantage. We wanted to use our voice, speak on that, speak on the issues that was at hand, and help the black community in, in what way, any way we can to, you know, make a change. And so it was just a great experience to be a part of. I'm so blessed um, to be a part of that 144, be a part of the documentary, be a part of that whole mo that moment, the movement. And it was just inspiring. And it just gave me a lot of confidence to go out there and use my voice and hopefully make a change. Even if I reach one person, two people, 10,000 people, I don't know. I'm going to use my voice to make a change. That's dope. We love that. Respect. Yeah. That's law. <laughs> <laughs> That's Absolutely. law. Respect. All right. Respect. <laughs> well, we got a gift for you for being here today, of oh, course. Really? The red bag. Deontay. Oh, my bad. There you go. <laughs> Like kind of heavy than usual. We're not going to open it today because we, we got some stuff that's just still coming for you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But in the you meantime, we'll pass this on over to you. Chris, Chris, Chris. Thank you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we, we like want to thank Christmas. you so much. Good luck on the season. Can't wait to see your growth in your, your rookie season part two slash <laughs> sophomore year. Um, once again, thank you for representing for the DMV and continuing to shine. We appreciate course, you. Thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. Today. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, y'all. Me and my dog wrote this down 50-50, no curtains. I'm closing the curtains. Stop all the acting. I'm tired of all of the purpose.